Okay, so now let's move on to ICU. Extract it. And it says it expands into the directory ICU. So there's no version number. Um, if CLang++ is available, we're using the mistaken belief that G++ might not be might not support C++11, even though configure is tested for that. If using G++, there will be an unnecessary warning at the end of configure. Building with G++ also takes longer than the estimated SPU below. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we'll just use the commands that are here and we'll see if there is a warning at the end of configure uh, not sure what a warning is if it is there but let's go ahead and make the package Okay, that's built. Let's run some tests on what's been produced.
Okay, so that's tested okay. Let's now install. And that's ICU done. Okay, so now we're going to rebuild libxml because we've now got ICU. XML2. XML2. So we'll copy this and we can now add in with ICU because we have this package as it says for better Unicode support. And build it. Okay, that's done. So let's run this command to get the test suite and run this command to run the tests. Right, so now let's run this command to view the errors. There are no errors, all passed. That was run. So we can again install this. And that's complete. So now we install libxslt. Yeah, it says about these um, two packages being required to be present, but for the moment, as their runtime, um, nothing, as far as I'm aware, will be requiring will be running and requiring these at runtime. So I think we're pretty safe not to install them at the moment. Um, we do install them at some point later on. So let's copy the config command. There's no extra options mentioned. Run make. And make check.
So it looks like we've got success there. So we can install that now. And that's Linux SLT complete. So we're finally back to where we were several hours ago. Um, oh, I didn't see the XMLT. I don't think we need that one. No. Okay. Did we have libx? No, we didn't. So we've got to download this. running configure and make straight away make a check that's all passed and make install again so for a package that took less than a minute to install we've had to do five or six hours of work okay so now we move on to XCB Proto. There's an XML build environment and libxml to run the tests. So configure it with that command. It looks like build it as well. Check what's produced is fine, and again, make install. If you're upgrading, the old package needs to be removed. Package config, we're not doing that obviously, so that's that package complete. So now we move on to libxcb. This needs libxau, which we've already installed, xcb proto we've just installed, xdmcp we've installed, um, and optionals libxslt, which we've already got anyway. Okay, so we configure with that command build the package run some tests on what's been produced all OK and install it. And move on to Xorg libraries. So there's a few dependencies for Xorg libraries. Uh, font config e-login D um, don't think we need any of these so we can ignore them but font con config needs free type we've got curl um, unzip I'm not sure if I bother with that at all no I've not bothered with that one it says it's for some tests downloading extracting files, so not too worried about that. Um, looks like these are probably all to do with documentation, actually. Free type needs half buzz. 
Yes, there's a circular dependency here with free type, so I'll have to deal with that. Um, libpng and which recommended, I mean, which is handy to have anyway. Um, don't think quite installed, certainly don't install Brotly. And let's see if I install the bar SVG. No. So half buzz has some recommendations, but I don't deal with a lot of these. In fact, I don't deal with any of them. Um, that's required for building GNOME. That's required for building Pango, neither of which we're going to install. Not going to be installing text live. We've got ICU. We will have had free type at some point and half buzz. So, um, don't think we'll bother with anything there. LibPNG has got no dependencies, which I don't believe has independencies. No. Login D needs Dbus. We've got Linux PAM. Uh, poll kit will need. Uh, Dot book XML, I'm not sure. Let me just check that they're actually on my list. No, they're not. So I don't install these, and I thought I did. Um, so we can ignore those completely. Um, despite that warning above, uh, before, I didn't see any errors when building without them. So obviously not that important for Myth TV. Dbus. Xorg libraries. Now, interestingly, yeah, it needs Xorg libraries, but these dependencies are for Xorg, so I'll have to rebuild Dbus after I've built the Xorg libraries. Uh, same with the login D. So that basically Dbus will be rebuilt to satisfy that requirement and that requirement. Uh, Polkit needs glib and duct tape, so that's a new one, that's not on my list, duct tape. Oh right, JS can be used in the place of duct tape, right, okay. I actually used JS when I did my tests with the previous versions, so what I shall do do is I'll attempt to use duct tape even though I've not used it in my tests because I think JS is quite a big build um, PCRE2 okay that's changed as well because that was PCRE so they've obviously moved to the newer version of PCRE2 Dbus again, fuse, don't need GDB for bindings. Yep, don't think I need anything else. That hasn't got any dependencies. Duct tape hasn't got any dependencies, so this could be potentially a little bit easier. Oh yes, JS needs Rust C, which also... Let me have a look at that. Yeah, so the, the, that means duct tape actually means we don't need to install. Uh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, that's got no dependency. So it's actually better than JS because JS has got a dependency on Rust C, which is, as I remember, quite a big build. Yeah, it's quite a long build, so that's quite beneficial, that is. So I'll get rid of those. And right, so I'm gonna to have to jiggle around what I've done here. So let's start with which, because that's quite straightforward. It doesn't have any dependencies. So 
so there is two ways of building witch here it's a package and there's a script which does almost the same thing but i believe the witch package does that much more so there's no test suite so we'll just install and that's done okay let's get rid of that so the next thing i had was rust which is going to be removed js so then i've got pcre so let's have a look at that one yeah that's got no dependencies that we're going to use so let me change that to pcre2 version is it 10.42 okay there's lots of information here for this configure let's just read them all enable unicode PCRA 2, 16 and 32 bit character support libz, bz2, read line and enable JIT which can speed up pattern matching so let's add that one as well oh sorry it's already got it there didn't see it further up ok so we'll accept the defaults and build it Okay, let's do some tests. That's fine. So now let's install it. And that's done. Okay, what have I got next? glib let's see what that's got so it needs libxslt pcre dbus for some tests so yeah that looks like that could be installed now uh, let's just have a quick look at dbus ok we could actually install this because um I've actually got it down to be built next, but there's no other dependencies of what we've built at the moment. So we could do that. As I say, this will get re rebuilt after those other two dependencies uh, have been satisfied. So let's copy this configuring and see what explanations there are. Disable Doxygen Docs, XML Docs, Disable Static, Enable User Session. With System D. Right, we haven't got that. System D PID. System PID file. Location is a PID file. So that's not actually there.
system socket. So I'm not sure if I should be adding this one in actually. So we can't see that there. And it's not in any other commands. Um, enable test, do not use it on a production build. Enable embedded test, do not use it on a production build. Enable asserts, so that enables debugging code. So I'll leave that out. So it's just really the with system PID file. Um, I haven't got a note that I enabled that before, so whether that's something new or I didn't enable it or I did and forgot to make a note of it, I don't know. Um, but we'll try it. It makes sense to have it. Right, so let's build this. That was quick. Uh, install it. If you're using a desk there, install. We're not. If you're still building the system in true, we did not start the daemon yet, but you want to compile some packages that require dbus, generate a dbus UUID to avoid warnings that require uh, when compiling some packages from command as the root user. So let's do that. If using eLogin D, create a symlink to the file lib dbus machine ID file. So we haven't got eLogin D yet. So we'll do that when we rebuild dbus. Um, dbus test cannot be run until after dbus Python and PYG object have been installed. To run the standard tests, make check. So does that mean the debus tests are the standard tests? Let's try to see what happens. Okay, well we've got a pass for what did run, so that's that's good. If you want to run the additional regression tests, unit regressions. Oh, so this is a bit that exposes functionality in the binaries, uh, not to be intended to be used in production builds, so we won't do that. So I'll just make a note about this extra parameter that I put in on the config, which was build with system pid file equals for slash run dbus for slash pid. Okay. Configuring dbus. The configuration files listed above should not probably not be modified. If changes required, you should create a dbus session local. If any packages install a dbus service outside of the standard dbus services directory, that directory should be added to local session configuration. For instance, use a local share. Dbus one service can be added by form, added by performing the following commands as the root user. So we could put that in. And to automatically start the debus team when the system is rebooted, install the boot script package. So I can do that now because I'm not going to be rebooting just yet. So this only starts the system-wide dbus daemon, but each user requiring access to dbus will also need to run a session daemon as well. And it mentions several ways of running the daemon there. So I don't think I need to do that at the moment. But if I go back to 
XORG libraries uh, uh, in fact what I'll do I'll move this here to remind me that I need to reinstall it after the XORG libraries have been done apart from that that should be the dbus done Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is e login D, which is there. Got Dbus, we've got Pam, uh, Pulkit is required at runtime so we don't need to install that just yet uh, I think that has other dependencies glib yeah uh, glib duct tape glib oh yes yeah, so that's got elogin d as a dependency anyway so being as it's runtime it's best to install um, e log in D now. Um, yeah, there's some kernel configuration here. I've already got a kernel running which is um, adequate for uh, what I've already done, so I don't need to check that. I know those settings are already in there. I guess I could check. Yeah, I suppose I should check them really, shouldn't I? Uh, do. In case there's anything different or anything's changed. So general setup, control group support. That's there, that's set. File systems. Uh, iNotify, which is down there, that's got a setting. Pseudo file systems. Temp, yeah, that's already forced on. Some test needs to use space cryptographic kernel API, so these are probably optional if it's just for tests. That's um, really up to you if you want that. Uh, user space I presume is under there hash let's have a look to see what that user API hash yes it's that setting there so it's actually in a menu now so that should be set really uh, but like I said, I'm not going to bother too much about that. Uh, let's put that back. Uh, being as it's only for tests. So, yeah, not, not too worried. So, let's carry on with building e login D let's just check the explanations controller policy duh D man equal auto determines whether the process of users should be killed when the user logs out. This defaults are true, this defeats the traditional use of screen or tmux. Right, I do use screen, so I think I'm going to set that because that's the last thing you'd want is to run the screen and find out something you're running um, in a multiplexed environment. It's not actually running because it's been killed. 
So, to tell me the process of use should be killed when the user logs out. This is default to true, but it's defeats for traditional use. Yeah, so I'm going to force that to false. And run make. Sorry, no, not make, it'll be a ninja on it. Yep. That's failed for some reason. Right, okay, I did have this with a couple of these uh, ninja type packages where, although we've got an option dman equals auto, it actually needs to explicitly be told not to build the manual uh, man pages, and that's because we've got some of these optional packages missing. Uh, that's interesting. I've got object toward introspection, but that hasn't come up in this list, so it looks like maybe it's not needed anymore. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do is start all over again. Uh, I'll start from here from fresh build directory. Uh, sorry, I didn't delete it, did I? So start again with a fresh build directory. I'll recall the config command that I had and I'm going to change the dman equals auto to dman equals false to force force the fact that I don't want the manuals to be built, uh, the man pages, sorry, to be built. So now let's run Ninja again. And as you can see, that's actually gone through OK now. So it says to run the test as a root to prevent some tests being skipped. There's possibly for what I saw before, some tests may be skipped anyway. Uh, but at least we can test as many as we... Oh, there was a failure there, I think. Test format table, kill by signal. So that could be this option here is missing as to why that's failed. Yeah, I haven't got a reason for that, but that's the only assumption I can make. Let's try running this without the root. Oh, it doesn't like it anyway. Uh, maybe it's because I've run some tests as root and they've now got root permissions. That's a possibility. So I'll carry on. That's uh, okay. And install the package. It could be the dbus is not running properly. That's a possibility. Configuration. You may wish to disable automatic killing process. Right, we've already done that because I know I definitely wanted that permanently. Um, I guess we could set that into the script as well. Uh, each user needs to register a user session using PAM login. Uh, sorry, Linux PAM login. PAM, the session file needs to be modified and a new file must be created in order for e login to work correctly. So we'll run these commands now. 
Okay, has that gone wrong again? Yeah, that's not quite behaving I'd expect it to be. That's better. So I'm not quite sure why some of these cut and paste aren't working, especially with these here documents. Whether there's a character in what I'm copying and pasting not working. Oh, actually it's that and and. Oh, I see. That's because, yeah, that and and joins on this cat command. That's why that's not working. So if I'd done this... It would all work. Yep, it has done. And I'll double check. These uh, have actually been created correctly for carrying on. Oh, in fact, it's looked like it's duplicated now because I've run it twice. So I'll need to edit these and just remove the last bits here so I want to remove everything from there so that should match that text there that bit there to there so that's okay and I better do the same for this one uh, session Okay, looks like that didn't do it, even though it was writing. Oh no, okay, this is just overwriting this file, so that's okay. Yeah, so this, this is appending and this one's just overwriting the file. So that's all okay. Yep, that's e -log in D done. Okay, so the next thing I've got is Gobject Introspection, but I don't see that that's come up at all. Let's get rid of e in D. The next one I've got is Polkit. So let's do that next. As I say, some of these have changed. That, that Gobject Introspection may have been for JS or for Rust, possibly. So Polkit needs glib and duct tape. Yeah, glib can be built and duct tape certainly can be. So let me insert a couple of lines here and put these in. Someone did duct tape next. Let's get that. So as I said to run here and then this make to build it. Let's just do it. Oh, build just right. Okay, that's quick. Certainly a great deal quicker than building JS and uh, Rust and so on. So now let's install. And that's done. So now let's do glib. It's got a patch. I'm 
Right, if desired, apply the optional patch. In many cases, applications that use this library, either directly or indirectly via other libraries, uh, output numerous. So we'll put this in in case that's used. Probably wouldn't be used, but it gives us the option. Uh, right, let's extract it first. And now we can put that patch in. Previous version of Julia was installed. No, it isn't. So let's create a temporary build directory. Copy the build commands. Now, once again, it's got a dman equals true this time. Um, I'm not sure if this will fail. Yes, it looks like it will do from my notes. So I'm going to have to change that to false and see if there's any other explanations no that's okay so let's run ninja now Okay, that's built. Um, it says if libx SLT is installed, the above command may indicate several errors. Well, I don't think we saw anything like that. So that's okay. Now it says the glib test suite requires desktop file utils for some tests. However, desktop file utils requires glib in order to compile. Therefore, you must install glib and then run the test suite. So we'll do the install. We'll attempt to run the test suite seems like there will be some that are missed um, but we'll have to just take that into account I guess do not run a test suite as root or some tests will fail unexpectedly and leave some non FHS compliant directories in the user hierarchy so let's come out of root straight away to test results after having installed the package issue that command and it says one test is known to fail. 
As I say, we may get more tests. There's a nice little icon there, little phases of moon. Never seen that before. Um, there's a possibility we may have more than that failing, uh, or possibly a, a few skipped tests. Okay, we've got some errors here. Uh, GDIB, GDIB error. So that's one that's known about. We've got some others that have failed here. But again, because we know the dependencies aren't complete, that's pos probably why. Um, apart from that, I'm satisfied. So we'll delete that. Close it down and move on to Polkit GNOME. Uh, sorry, Polkit one two two. Oh, is that why install Gobjet's introspection is recommended? Right, yep, I'll install that because it's a recommendation. Uh, we've got GDIB as well, so that's okay. Right. So... Okay, so we've got GLib optional. Not particularly worried about any of them. So we'll just go ahead and build it. Now, uh, there's no dman equals at all, so I've got no notes about enabling that or disabling it rather, so this should build as it is. Yeah, it was fine. Let's do some tests. Got 
one failure package config, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, let's try doing a config. Uh, there's so many packages that that are missing. Uh, so, um, possibly some recommended and definitely some optional that it could be the reason why there's the odd failure here and there. Yeah, it's failed again. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So, just do the ninja install. Done. Okay, so now we can do pulk it. We've got all the other recommended packages installed. If libx LT is installed in docbook, XML and NONS are required. If you installed, if you do not want to install any of the docbook packages mentioned, you need to... Oh, right, okay, yeah, I have got a note here that to set dman equals false. So, that's fine. So we need a group and a user. Hulk it to run. So you can see the default JavaScript engine they've used here is duct tape anyway, so that's good. Uh, let's check these options here. So dman needs to be changed to false. Don't need that. Introspection equals false. So I'm not certain, and yes, we do have it installed, so I'll add that as well. So demand is equal false. Don't want any examples, don't want any extra documentation, so let's try that and build. Okay, so test results first ensure the debus daemon is running on both debus. Okay, well um we've got a user debus session but not the daemon, so this is this is probably gonna fail spectacularly. Yes it has. Well oh well five, it's only failed on one, so that's not too bad. So uh, yeah, that's quite good. Um so let's install the package and remove some files, probably to do a system D with the looks of it. So if you didn't install Polka with Linux PAM support, you can skip this section. We did, so we must do this. Uh, so do So that's done. Okay. So that's polk it done. So next we move on to libpng. Additional downloads recommended patch to include animated PNG functionality in libpng required to use system to png so i don't think this is needed but 
it may be advantageous to have it. I, I mean, Miss TV might use it. Um, there's no harm in adding that functionality in. So run this command to extract that patch. Run the configure command. Build it. And run some tests. Okay, that's all passed. So now let's install it. And that's complete. So now we move on to free type. We need to build this without half bars, then build half bars, and then rebuild free type. So we'll do the free type for the first time. Documentation, not interested. We've got libpng, we've got which. Not worried about the optional, so let's fetch the package. about the docs so let's install it with these commands put these two set in first copy the configure command is there anything else we need to know about oh yes of course we need to tell it that we haven't got half buzz at the moment so we'll copy that in and run that now we can build it Okay, that's complete. There's no tests, so we just make install, and that's done. We've got no documentation to install that we need. So that's the first install of free type. Now we can install half buzz. It says recommended dependencies are not strictly required to build a package, however you might not get expected results at runtime if you don't install them. Um, I can't remember seeing anything funny going on, um, but certainly from what it says here, well we've got Gobject introspection anyway, even though we're not building GNOME. Glib, we've got Graphite, we're not building uh, because we don't have either of them. I see we've got free type we've got and Cairo we're not bothering with either. Now one thing 
we have got to do, let's extract this. Is the part of the configure command here has got graphite 2 enabled. We need to set this to disabled. Um, it does say that it's required when building, if you need to build text live or LibreOffice. We're not building either of them, obviously. So I'm going to put disabled here to ensure that it doesn't try to build against it. Um, I think I've got notes that the docs needs to be added in, even though we haven't got GTK doc installed. So I'm going to force that anyway, just to prevent the configure from or the build from failing. Just to make the point that we don't want the documentation. So let's build that and wait for it to complete. Okay, so that's finished building. Let's run the tests. I've got one failure again. Uh, looks like it's for Mac OS, so that's not a problem. So Ninja install, install the package, and it's done. So now let's rebuild free type 
two or free type rather and this time include the functionality of half buzz so it didn't do the documentation let's do these two set commands again let's see if we can f recall the previous config yep there it is okay there wasn't anything else so just remove the disable half buzz run make it says it's found half buzz yes it does Okay, that's done. We can now install the package, no test suite, and it's done. And now we can go back to font config. Uh, oh, by the way, free type was a dependency for Myth TV as well, so. That's a total of four packages we've built out of the ones we've built so far that Myth TV needs anyway. So we've got free type, we've got curl, we haven't got unzip, the rest of these are optional anyway. So let's go ahead with building, or rather fetching this one first and building it. Uh, if you have dock utils installed and remove the disabled docs parameter from the configure command below you must have sgml ok so that's not a problem so let's get the configure command and check if there's any further information no there isn't so let's configure it and build the package and run some tests okay we've got one failure one test known to fail if the kernel does not support username spaces. So it doesn't say which test, but I imagine it's that one. So let's install the package. If it did not remove the disabled docs, you can install the pre-generated documentation by using the following commands. So, um, there's some main pages there, but again, I'm not really installing documentation explicitly, so I'm going to ignore that. So that's font config. So now we go back to Xorg libraries. We've got font con config installed. We've got eLoginD installed. eLoginD, e sorry. Uh, which is two requirements for this. I was no sorry, e login D and XOR, yeah that's right. So once this is installed, now we've got all the dependencies, we'll in reinstall dbus afterwards and then carry on. So there's loads of files here and what they do is they automate this slightly. So we're still building from source but the build of these is automated because it's quite similar. So what I'm going to do first is to make a directory to keep these files separate because there's a load of files uh, just keep it a little bit tidy so I'll call it lib7 and this is like a steering file to download these files oh look, they, they create a directory so let's move that above ok 
Okay. And what this will do is it will make, make a directory and it gets all those files and then it checks them as well to make sure they've downloaded correctly which is something probably should be doing for each package anyway. So I'll just run that to check some more, they're all okay. So I can carry on with the installation. There's several ways to get these installed, which it talks about there. Because we've got sudo and because we've turned off the password, it's nice and easy just to create this function, this bash function. And it means that the packages can be built as a normal user and installed as the root using sudo. Um, some libraries come with a test suite. If you wish to execute them, either comment out the rm-rf below so that after all libraries are installed, you can come back to the corresponding directory and run make check or do individual builds running the test for each of those distributed with working test suites. Alternatively, you can comment out the make check and at the end check the results with that. So the BLFS developers have confirmed that LibX11, XT, XMU, XPM and SHM fence are distributed with working test suites. So yeah, let's copy this in and remove that hash so that the test suites are run and see how we go with that. So all this is doing is going through that steering file, each each package here, extracting it and building it as per these instructions here. Oh, didn't do that, did I? Started with a subshell, so it would quit straight away the environment. So. Let's start that all again. Let's get rid of this log file as well. So let's run this bashy. Recall that build command. Which we can't do because we're in a different shell. So let's copy it again. Just wait for these to finish building now.
Okay, so that's all complete. If we exit the shell and then just see how to check the logs. Yep, there's no failures there at all. The ones that were tested with the looks of it. Configuration. So if you've chosen to install into user, then no further configuration is necessary and you can skip the rest of this section. If you've opted for the alternate prefix, you should create two sim links. Okay, so we don't need to do anything else there. So that's the um, Xorg libraries installed. Move that on, ready for the next package. Let's go back to here and reinstall dbus. So let's see if we can recall the previous command we use for configure. There it is. Yeah, that's right. The only thing we added on was the system PID file. So I'll reuse that. there's anything else we need to change at this point so let's reconfigure that now run make And make install. Okay, we're not using Dester installation. If you're still building your system in True or did not start the daemon yet but want to compile some packages that require the dbus generate dbus UUID, so we should still have that running. There is a way of uh, listing the sessions is it going to be monitor oh ok we can't because there's no x11 by the looks of it uh, oh that's the tool that we're going to get on oh, no, a dbus launch it was yeah I'm not too sure I'm sure there was a a way of listing um current yeah I won't run anything because I, I don't know what really what I'm doing uh, so we shouldn't need to run this because we've already run that once uh, and I'm going to start the daemon up anyway now we've got the proper uh, dbus installed if you're using elogind create a sim link so we're now using it so I'm going to create that sim link this time as you do minus ESU. Um, if you want to run regression test requires oh uh DB test so let's run the standard tests as an unprivileged user. So let's do that next. I seem to remember we had one or two, was it? Yeah. Failures. Previously, so we'll see if we improve it. Yeah, we've got no failures now, so that's obviously because it wasn't a complete installation. If you want to run the unit regression test, right, so this is what we don't run because it breaks a uh, live build, which is what we've got. Um, we created that file. Let's just check that it's still there. Yes, it is. There it is there. 
and we've created the script so in theory all we need to do is to run the init to start it up properly all oh, right perhaps we didn't i thought oh i'm not super user that's why bus and that's that running I'm not sure if it writes anything to D message no so these seg faults are nothing to worry about they're just some of the tests that would have created that um, right so that is done um, So we may need to refer to this possibly if we need to uh, in the future. But apart from that, that's complete. And I think what I'm going to do is carry on in the next video with the rest of the build. Because uh, there's still quite a lot of stuff to build for Xorg. Okay, so we're continuing the build of Xorg with Libex CVT. So fetch the package. Extract it. Okay, once got the right command. Straightforward install. I'll just put this all in. And that's done. There's no test suite, so we can install it. Uh, with Ninja installed. And that one's done. Let's so move next on to lib. Uh, sorry, XCB util. Let's tidy that one up. And that requires libxcb, which we should have already installed. Yep, that was a few packages back in the Xorg chapter. So let's fetch this one. Let's see, be you too. Again, straightforward configure and build. No test suite, so we'll just install and that's done so next is XCB util image and you can see that requires a package just installed Again, that's similar build commands. And we've got a command here to run some tests. So let's put that in. They've passed, so let's install. And that's complete. Okay, that's done. Move on now to XCB Util Key Sims. Extract. 
extract it. And follow the instructions, which are quite familiar by now. No tests, so install and it's done. And next move on to XCB Util Render Util. make and install it's done okay next is XCB util WM Same commands for building again. No test suite, so we'll just go straight for the install, and that's done. And move on to XCB Util Cursor. So you can see this requires two of uh, the previous packages we just built. Again, very familiar instructions to build and install this package. And that's complete. Okay, so the next package I've got is Misa, which will have several dependencies. So, oh, let's just move that on. So, actual libraries we've got. So, the first requirement is libdrm. Um, and that's actually required, a requirement for Myth TV as well. Then we've got something called Mako. So, this is new. This is not on my um, original list for the older version of Linux from scratch, so let's get that open. That's actually a Python module, and looks like this needs some dependencies as well. So, this is only for testing. Let's see if we can install it without having to install a load of other things. PY test. Okay, that looks like that needs a lot of other packages, which I'm not going to bother with, just for the sake of a couple of Python modules, um, to have to install a load more. Um, big pardon, Mako is on my list. There's another one that doesn't appear to be here. Oh, Markup Safe, yeah, that's right. Again, PY test for the test, so yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. So let's uh, start with libdrm, I think. 
get that one done. So this has got Cairo, CMake, could be used to find dependencies without package config. And there's stuff there to build, man pages, uh, but apart from that, don't need anything else. So we can just install this one as it is. So there's no extra options we need to bother about, so we can just put all of this in. Oops, not twice though. And get it to configure and build. Okay, that's done. Ninja tests run some tests. They've all passed, there's only one skip. And now do an installation and that's complete. Okay, so now let's do these Python modules. Markup safe. Oh, I see. Hang on, what have I done here? Um, Alright, okay. These links always do me because uh, whenever you click on them in the modules, I think the Perl modules are the same. The actual title of the modules off the page, I presume it's hidden behind this her header, so you have to scroll back a bit to see what's come up. Yeah, I thought I'd open that twice. So we need to install Markup Safe first because that's the dependency for Mako. So let's grab this. Notice that the Python modules begin with a capital M, capital letters. So we run this command to install it or build it at least. And then this command to do the actual install. And we're not testing. Let's see what would happen if we run that anyway. I imagine, yeah, there's no command. Uh, oh, there's some extra f functions here. Okay, I don't think there's anything for us to worry about there. So that's that one done. So Mako next. It looks similar instructions to the ones we just did for mark up safe. Install it and that's done. Okay, so that's those done. What else have we got? libva to provide VA API for some Gallium drivers. This is a circular dependency. You must build libva first without EGL support. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, we have to build, rebuild um, Misa. So... Install libvia first without EGL support. Install Mesa and then rebuild libvia. Okay, so let's get that one up. Let's do that next. Um, a 
additional downloads. What does it say about this? Okay, so VA API driver, that's what we'll be using because this has got an Intel chip. I would assume that if you haven't got an Intel graphics chip, that it would be unnecessary to install this driver. Um, yeah, Intel VA API is designed specifically for video cards based on Intel GPU. Um, I'm pretty sure with the NVIDIA driver, if you installed that, that comes with its own uh, acceleration and I guess likewise with AMD, but don't quote me on that because I, I don't know. Uh, I just imagine it would be similar. So we'll fetch this driver as well because as I say, that's what I will be using. Um, and the, the built-in graphics, Intel built-in graphics are perfectly fine to work with. Um, Myth TV, um, all the uh, CPUs I've built Myth TV on, going back to, to say the Pentium 4 was the first one, all were capable of displaying. Uh, you're using the built in Intel graphics uh, to display the um, broadcasts perfectly fine. So we've got the uh, LibDRM installed, so that's good recommends Mesa so we've got to make sure we don't install with that I don't think there's any switches to set no there isn't so we'll just extract the VA driver and run these commands now obviously if you've got different graphics cards you may have to look into the different drivers uh, or accelerators that are available um, for example just notice there's a VD PAL there so that as it says there is for NVIDIA GeForce 8 onwards so you might want to install that if you've got NVIDIA, although like I say, it's, it's a bit pointless to run Myth TV with a, an accelerated graphics card such as that. Um, it's a bit overkill. Um, it'll be extra electric to be using if you have that running. So that's built. Let's make install. And then we can just copy and paste these commands to build the VA API driver for Intel. Again, similar commands. Okay, that's done. Now let's install. So that's complete. So what else have we got? VD Power we don't need. LLVM for Gallium 3D. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I'm not sure. We've got LLVM anyway, haven't we, I think, so that's okay. So Wayland Protocols, we'd need Wayland Protocols. Um, it's certainly recommended. It says it's required for Plasma, recommended for GTK Plus 3. Um, we don't actually install any of the GTK um, packages, but I did install Wayland, the Wayland Protocols. Um I think it was more because I knew QT was a requirement and QT is a big part of Plasma, so that was my line of thought for that. So whether it is actually required or not, I don't know, but it is recommended, so I'm going to build it. 
and Wayland protocols requires Wayland. That itself requires libxml2, which we've got, and then the rest of these are for building documentation and man pages, so not, not so important. So let's do Wayland next. So documentation equals false, that's fine. We'll just copy all of this, paste that in to build it. And we can run some tests with that command. All looks good and install so that's that done and now we can do the protocols well and the protocols Once again, it's uh, pretty similar. That's finished. Let's do some tests. That looks all right. So we can just carry on and install and that's done. Okay, I think we're in a position now to build <coughs> Mesa. So let's do the download. Oops. And I thoroughly recommend download, downloading this patch. There's a couple of demos on there to prove that Mesa is working correctly. A uh, couple of little tests rather than the complete um, demos package, which is not part of BLFS. You can see that's in bold, that link. So there are no specific instructions for that, whereas there is for the tests that are included in the patch. So let's extract Mesa. So the Mesa version has changed and it can be a bit temperamental with installation when versions have changed. I'm hoping that nothing has changed too much. Um, so let's start by building a temporary directory, copying this setup command let's just read some of the information here put up release gallium platforms okay drivers equals auto right I have got some notes where I did set some of these but they're crossed off so I'm assuming these will work by default what's, what's been specified here. So let's try it. Okay, and we'll do Ninja to build.
Okay, that's built successfully. I can run some tests with this command. Not sure how long these take. Okay, not too long. Okay, so that's all tested fine. Let's now install. And there's some optional documentation there. I'm not going to install it. It's up to you if you want to do that. And that's Misa installed. Um, and that is a, also a requirement for uh, Myth TV as well that we've just built. So let's tidy that up. And what we've got to do now is to reinstall libva, which incidentally is also a requirement for Myth TV. Um, so where's the dependencies? And 
I remembered, I've just been reminded looking at my notes, that we've got to reinstall the, not only libva, but the VA API driver because, um, well, basically because they're both, li both um, packages are listed here and both, there's no, what I'm trying to say is there's no um, specific um, mention of which of these patch packages requires what. So therefore I'm assuming both need the recommended and required packages. Um, incidentally, we've also now got Wayland installed, so there's no harm in installing them again, just purely to get the Way Wayland functionality built in. So they didn't take too long, so there's no harm in um, rebuilding them. Uh, so let's start with libva again. Yeah, this is actually taking a little bit longer to build this time. Um, you can see it's doing Wayland stuff there now, which wasn't there before. And I think I saw something about Mesa, which again, yeah, there's Wayland, it's found. Uh, I guess the GLX stuff is the Mesa stuff, so that's probably why that took a little bit longer that time. So now let's do a make install. That's fine. Uh, we can just carry on, can't we? Can I'll just do the config by itself. Yeah, I can see there's Wayland stuff it found there. Uh, back there. DRM it's found. Can't see any GL stuff. Specifically. But it's found the libva we just built, so that's the main thing. So let's build. Okay, and we can install again. And that's those two packages rebuilt. Okay, so we can shut that tab down and move on to X bitmaps. That requirement there, you talk macros, is one of the ones we've already done. And again, the similar instructions to build this. In fact, this one's got no build, it's just a configure and install. So that's done. Now we move on to Xorg applications. Again, this is a, um, a session, uh, not session, a set of packages which are built automatically. Um, you can see the requirements there. We've got all these requirements now. We've we installed libpng previously. Um, we've installed, just installed Mesa. We've already installed xbitmaps and xcbutil. We've got Linux PAM, that's fine. The other packages are outside of the scope of the BLFS manual, so let's make a steering file for both the download and the build. Oh, that doesn't seem to copy properly. Let's try that again. That's better. And we can run these commands to 
process that's doing file download and then check each package that's been downloaded by checking the signature of each file. And you can see they're all tiny packages that are coming down almost instantly. So imagine having to do all the keyboard work for that to compile all those. So they've all validated, so okay, there's no errors at the back end of that. So let's just run this bit of code here to create a bash function. Go into this new bash environment where it exits on the first error. And then we build all the packages with those commands. Right, so those have all built, there's no errors. So let's exit that shell. And then it says, unless you've installed the optional dependencies, remove an undocumented script which is reported to be broken. So the undocumented dependencies, sorry, the documented dependencies. Uh, sorry, optional. So we haven't installed two of them. So I would, and being as this one's nothing to do with X Windows, in terms of um, functionality of graphical displays, I would suggest that we should remove that by running that command. And that's complete. So let's remove back to our normal BLFS directory and move on to X cursor themes. And you can see this needs Xorg applications, which we just built. And what do we say? We explicitly install the cursor themes in user instead of Xorg, so none Xorg desktop environments can find them, okay. Well, it doesn't make any difference to us because we're installing into user anyway. And that's built. We can install and it's done. So now we move on to Xorg fonts. And again, this is another suite of packages. So not so many packages to download this time. But similar instructions to before. Create a steering file. These instructions download and validate the 
download. We don't need to run this again because that function will still be valid while we're in this environment. Um, and in fact, if I type in as root, as you can see there, I've pressed tab to get that up. You can see it's still in the current environment. So create a new environment, a new shell, which exits on an error. Copy and paste these commands to build and install the fonts. Okay, that's done. Let's quit that shell. And then when all the fonts have been installed, the system must be configured so that com font config can find the true type fonts since the fonts are outside of the default search path of several packages. If XORG is not, XORG previous is not in use, it makes similar to the XORG true type font directories and user share fonts by running the following commands as the root user. Okay. So I'll just copy all of this and paste that in. And that's done. So next we've got X keyboard config. So we've got a temporary build directory these and command to configure the build. It's nice and simple and ninjas to build it. There's no test suite, so we'll just run the install and that's done. So now we've got X Wayland. And this has got some dependencies. So libxcvt we've done. Um, Pixman we need to look at. Protocols we've done. Xorg fonts we've done. Libepoxy we need to do. Uh, Libterpc, let's have a look at that one. Yeah, we've done that one as well. So uh, we've done Mesa and we're not going to bother with any of these, although we've already got Nettle. So let's start with Libepoxy. We've got the requirement for that, which is Mesa. So fetch the package, extract it. fairly standard build instructions. Uh, now there's a docs equals true here to turn on the docs. I haven't got any notes that we need to set that to false explicitly. So, we'll see how it goes. Yep, it was okay. Let's do the tests and then we can install the package. So that's done. The next one I've got is Pixman optional GTK. Well, I found that GTK is not required to get. Um, Myth TV running. I did because it was, uh, oh yes, it is optional, sorry, yes, yeah, so we don't need it at all. Uh, it says the LibPNG is for demos. I do remember having a look into whether it's worth installing GTK, but um, as I remember, there's quite a few dependencies and it's optional anyway, so there's no big deal there. So let's fetch the package. Extract it. And 
and yeah, usual build these sort of packages. Okay, that's done. Let's run some tests. Okay, that's all tested okay. So let's install that. Oh, that's a quick install. And now we should be able to install X Wayland. Let's double check the dependencies, yep. Yeah. So what we've got here, we've got a sed command, temporary directory, then a configure command or setup command. Let's see if there's any explanations about this. No, there isn't. So we'll just run that as it is. That looks okay. Let's build it.
Okay, that's built. We need to run LD config first as the root before we run the tests. So let's just run sudo LD config. That's fine. Now let's run ninja test. Well, wow, that was quick. So now let's just install it. And that's complete. So next XORG drivers. So um, yeah, you can use LSPCR. We haven't actually installed it. Um, but if you're unsure what video hardware you've got, as it suggests, you can use that. Um, what I'll be installing is libevdev, um, libinput, um, and the Intel graphics driver. So I'll start with the Xorg lib input driver. It's probably the best one to start off with. And you can see that it requires lib input. And that itself requires lib fdev and also mtdev. So we'll start with this one. So I'll build this and can't imagine it take particularly long. No. And we'll make install that. So that's that package done. MTDev. Uh, next we need to install libfdev, which is this one, yep. So note the optional packages we don't need to worry about. Fetch the package. Uh, kernel configuration again, I say this should be already set up, but I guess there's no harm in um, oh, let's just become root straight off. No harm in checking. Um, could grab the config file for these, but it's always nicer to know your way around the menuing system. It gets well, it's getting more and more complicated. So, so device drivers input is a little bit way down here. There it is. Input device support. Generic input layer that's already set. Event interface is set. Miscellaneous devices is set. And under there we should have user level driver support, which is set as well. So that's fine. So where are we? Okay, so let's start the build. Documentation disabled, so we should be able to run this as it is. So it says the regression test can be run as the root with the ninja with ninja test in a graphical session. Well, we haven't got the graphical se session yet because we haven't finished installing. Uh, the graph of the, the GUI so it says you have to have that enabled that config input you input 
Um, so unfortunately, we won't be able to do the test basically. So we'll just do the ninja install, and that's that done. So it's lib f dev. Now we can go back to lib input. Um, again, we've just checked this actually user level driver support, so we know that's activated. So let's copy this to create this temporary build directory and the setup for Mizen. Build type release debug GUI equals false. Test is false. Disables compilation of the main test, even if the test defined as false, you can still run the first four minor tests as a regular user. Okay, we'll keep that. Wacom installed, that's fine. Documentation equals true. Okay, so we know that if it tries to build something with documentation, we can set that to false explicitly, but hopefully it's... Uh, intelligent enough not to try so let's do ninja to build okay all right so Actually, by removing that D-test, it says it runs a full test. Let's do a Ninja test. Yeah, that was quite quick. Um, let's change that to build and do a more thorough set of tests. So let's copy that and remove. It said actually to remove this. rather than set it to true. Oh, did I remove the wrong thing? Oh, I see. I didn't, I didn't remove the uh, new line. So I need to remove that and that as well. So it should look like that. Okay, so let's rebuild this. Okay, that's complete. Then it says if you've enabled full test, you can run this test as the root by executing ninja test. So S U minus E ninja test. Sorry, that should be sudo. Okay, so there's twenty four odd, odd extra tests. Okay, looks like a lot of fail then. It could be again that we're not inside the... Oh no, it looks like it's using Valgrind. I didn't see that. Yeah, Valgrind. Okay, so it's pointless running the extra tests in this situation because we haven't got Valgrind installed. Okay, after all that. So let's do a Ninja install. If we pass document, let's equals true to me and you can install generated documentation we'll skip that so that's lib input installed and 
that's that done. So now we can build the Xorg lib input driver. With these simple commands. Make check, all good, and make install, and that's complete. So that's the input side of it. The next thing we need to install is the graphical side of it. Um, obviously, if you've got Synaptics pad, like a touchpad on a laptop, well, you probably wouldn't be installing that um, for a Unless you had a USB TV tuner, I guess. Um, I don't think I've got that installed for this touchpad keyboard I've got that I used. Um, whether it offers any extra functionality or not, I don't know. And the Wacom drive, you probably don't want that either. And as we've seen for the video acceleration, um, we've already installed the uh, Intel accelerator. And this one here is for the... NVIDIA accelerators, but we need to install just the bog standard driver for XOR to communicate with. So I'll be installing this one here, and as you can see, there's other various other ones there if you have different graphics. So I'll pick that one out. XOR driver, you can see that it supports quite old graphics chips back to the 800s. In fact, I'm not sure if that's when. Uh, I think the first generation, whether they eight tens of Intel integrated video chips, so it does go back quite a way. So basically, you could, you could argue, arguably say it's, it's every single Intel integrated chip in their X eight six CPUs. So let's fetch this driver. We've got these two installed, so that's fine. Let's extract XF86 video. Um, okay, yeah, we should check this, shouldn't we? So let's do an SU or sudo CD sources Linux make menu config. Again, down to device drivers, graphic supports about 20 or so lines down here, normally two screens worth. So direct rendering manager is set and you can see the Intel graphics option is set as well. So that's all good. Okay, so we can start the installation with this command. Let's see if there's any extra options. Enable KMS only, enable UXA. Work around problems with the Intel drivers. Sandy Bridge new acceleration driver. Okay, so this is a potential problem. Um, I don't recall having any graphics glitches. So I won't install that unless I find it's necessary. So I'll just accept that configuration as it is. and build the package.
Okay, it's built, so there's no test suite. Let's become root and install the package. That's done. Now what I've just thought I'll do is I will copy this and I'll disable it all in case there is a problem. The file's there, I don't have to get access to the web page to copy it in. So I'll just edit that now to comment out all those lines, including the ones that are already commented out to make a point that they were originally commented out. So that is now there if I need it. I can just re-enable it again. And that is the end of that installation. So I'll close that down. Oh, let's tidy this up. And move on to uh, Xorg Legacy I've got next. So it looks like that's probably been removed. Oh, there it is there at the end. Okay. Right, so it says many people do not need these. There's still a few old packages that might require a benefit from these deprecated fonts. Okay, so it looks like maybe it's not worth installing that anymore. So I'm going to remove that from my list for future reference. And we move on now to... TWM, so this is the windowing manager, windowing manager. Um, I think it stands for tiny window manager, as I remember. don't think it says here, does it? Oh, tab window manager, that's it. Um, so this requires Xorg, oh right, so this, oh right, okay, that's why it's to be installed, because of the... Um, it's a recommendation for this um, application, probably because it is so basic. So we'll get that back up and we'll install it. So it's a suite of installs. So once again, we've seen this before, create a steering file couple of commands to download and validate the downloads. Just check that I've got that function still. Yes, I have. So I've done it to copy and paste it in again. Create this environment that quits immediately on an error. And build the packages. That's done. Let's type exit to quit that shell we created. And that's done. So now we can install TWM. Uh, that'll do, won't it? Okay, we've got a set here. So let's put that in first. And the configure, right, I'm just going to look at the help in configure because there are some options that may be useful to, oh no, they're not here. OK, 
I thought it was some extra... Ob oh, yes, it's an able feature, and I can't remember what the features are called now. Uh, it's basically to enable some options in the... Uh, oh, no, sorry, it's not this. It's in X term. Big pardon, it's in X term, which we're going to install in a moment. So I'll just run that configure as it is. And build make. And then make install. And that's TWM installed. So next we've got X term. And this requires a monospace TTF or OTF, such as deja vu fonts. So we need to install that first. So we'll get this SourceForge directory up. Download the latest version. Um, we go into the latest version here. And then, what's the one they've got there? Tar.bz2. Fonts TTF237. Oh, it's the same link, is it? Yeah, it's the same link, okay. I was hoping we could get a direct link because we need to paste it into the terminal. So what I want to do is cancel that and hopefully somewhere it will say problem downloading. Uh, oh, right, okay. So now I'm being spammed. Uh, let's try that. Let's try right clicking that quickly. Oh. Paste. I'll put this in quotes in case. Oh, no, it isn't. Paste that. I'll put this in quote. Yeah, there's a few strange characters like question marks and M sand which might confuse wget. So let's see if that'll download. No, it doesn't look like it has. Um, Oh, right, okay, this should do it. No, this won't do it either. Uh, that's a shame. Oh, copy download link. Didn't see that. Okay, so if I click on that, wget, right click, paste. Yep, that's better. Okay, that's downloaded after all that. Oh, I wonder if that's the reason why I used Falcon, because it offers that. Um, okay, now to install these, let's extract them. And change into the directory. And we just go to the top of the page, and there's an example here of how to install these. Uh, there's lots of information there to read about it. But basically, what we need to do is to... Oh, this is specific for the Deja Vu font, so that's nice of them. Let's just see what we've got in this directory. Okay, so we create a font directory called Deja Vu. There's the root user. Let's try that again. And then this command copies all the TTF files which are in the TTF directory just there. It copies them into that new directory we just created. So effectively they've been copied to the system now. And then this command here updates the font config cache with that new directory. And 
don't worry about these apparent message, uh, error messages here. It's, it's okay. That has run fine. So as it says here, I strongly recommend to install the Deja Vu fonts. We've just done that. So we can tidy that up now. And in fact, I'll move this Deja Vu fonts download to where it should be. And TWM as well, I didn't realize it's still in this other directory. Okay, and then I'll move out of it. Okay, so we've got the Deja Vu fonts. We're not worried about these optional packages. So let's get Xterm. Okay, we've got a couple of commands here. And again, I'm going to run this configure command with help. Uh, I think there's a... A useful option. Yes, yeah, it's enable tool, toolbar. That's the one I'm after. Um, it gives you a toolbar on the X term window with loads of options for configuring the fonts and the layout and so on. So it's quite useful to have, I find. So let's copy all of this in here, paste that in, I'll go back here and I'll just stick that option in there, paste that in there and then I'm going to go down here and just check to see if there's any other options that need setting, there isn't, so I'll press enter there. and run make to build it. Okay, so now let's install the package. And that's complete. Uh, configuring X term. There's two ways to configure X term. You can add X resource definitions to the user's X resources file or add them to the system while wired X term file. Yep, so this is a good thing to do. Um, what I'll have to find out there's a setting for stopping the screensaver coming on because. Um, there's a chance if I'm building and recording the screen that the screen saver could come on. So I'll have to find that if I need that. I can't remember what the setting is offhand. Um, but yeah, we'll do this. And that's next term completed. So Xclock is another app, another simple app that can be installed. No dependencies apart from obviously Xorg. And simple installation instructions. Make install and that's complete. Okay, and really the final package we need to install for getting the GUI going is X in it. So we've got the X all libraries, recommended runtime only. If you don't have these installed, I believe the X server will start up if it's working correctly and you'll just see a blank screen because there's nothing for it to display, uh, which is why TWM is so useful. It's very lightweight and it does give you a very basic graphical environment to work with. So let's download this. And 
to is there any extra commands? No, there isn't. So build it with that command. There's no test suite, so we can in now install it. Oops. So for starting Xorg from the command line, the default instructions above start Xorg on the current virtual terminal. Maybe convince the Xorg and associated application messages in the virtu current virtual terminal, normally TTY1, and start the graphical environment on the first available unused terminal, normally TTY7. To do this, set the SUID bit on Xorg application as the root user. Um, right, so um, I can't show you this screen because obviously I'm accessing the PC remotely. Um, I'll put this command in. And what I'll have to do is to um, pause the video and connect up the screen recorder to the terminal. Um, instantly I'll have to reboot the machine because it won't pick up the um, video otherwise. So if you're following along and you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, then I do. I will be actually rebooting the machine. Uh, let's just see what this has got here in testing. Okay, it's just some commands to run. Right, I'm not sure if I'll be able to run these. Um, that's a fine tuning display. So basically, it's just doing stuff to show that uh, DRI is working and so on. So I'll have to copy and paste these with my eyes and fingers. Right, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll shut this down, pause the video, and um, come back with the um, actual PC that we've been building on.